flight boss, bitch. You know, for sure. You know, listen to the mind of an Atari's Mill. I'm the Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And right now, I want to talk about the Book of Enoch, and I want to uh, break down the misinterpretations of it because these misinterpretations scare a lot of religious people, and a lot of these religious people grow up to be theologians, so they end up trying to fight or defend something that they truly do not understand, but based upon all the rhetoric put behind it, this will put them in that warlike spirit because the spirit that they're following is already a warlike type of individual anyway. So let's get this into, um, let's rectify this energy. Now, when we talk about the book of Enoch, at the root of everything, at the root of everything, before you get lost into the analogies, the mythologies, the stories, you need to know that the book of Enoch is about, it's explaining the fall season. Is explaining the autumn, that season. Because you have certain books that explain spring. You have certain books that ex explain uh, summer. When we talk about Bibles, even when we talk about the Gospels, um, Luke, Mark, John, and, and the other motherfucker, you need to know that each one is representing an element. And it's supposed to be representing each element of the figure Jesus Christ that they was explaining at the moment. But this was just their way of deifying them explaining the fire, Water, air, and earth. And Tom, Luke, and John, uh, I have to keep saying Tom, Mark, Luke, John, and the other motherfucker, the, each of their stories represents an energy signature. You see what I'm saying? Rather, uh, one of them is fire, one of them is water, one of them is air, and one of them is earth. So keep that in mind. Um, now, check this out too. And it's supposed to be the four natures. Now, when we get into the book of Enoch, this, uh, now each, each book, scripture, whatever, is about a transit or an alignment or astrological pinpoint or some form of astrology or deifying a planet in some way, shape, or form. So don't follow a lost star. Now, in a nutshell, when we're talking about the book of Enoch, right? Now, the star that got discovered during the time of the fall season, the beginning of all. This is why Archangel Uriel, and we're going to get into that, which is the fixed star Antares. The fixed star Antares rises on the west. That is like the star or the luminary or whatever the fuck you want to call it. The the mountain or the fucking candles stick in the goddamn sky or the flame in the sky. The one that rises on the west during a time of around September 23rd or something like that during the beginning of fall, that's the star that's going to rise. Now, for the most part, when, it, when it's fall, that's when we are further away or spinning away from the stars or chakras that's close to us, a.k.a. the sun, to make it what y'all want to call temperament or temperature or spring or summer. So once we get into the fall era, that's when things start to get cold. Things start to get distant. So during this time, based upon the civilization, they was looking in the sky as these things in the sky falling. So this is why we start to call autumn the fall season, based upon this book and the scripture. But for the most part... Reason why they was calling these things angels, which is the stars in the sky. This is what they was calling angels, planets and stars in the sky. They call these angels because they called them sons of God. Now, you need to understand these terms. See, theologians, they go to school for 40 years and still not understand what they're talking about because they're indoctrinated. When we talk about sons of God, say a spirit is a God, right? Then the sons of it represents masculine energy. Now, masculine energy is not exclusive to any malefic figure or any statue or any scripture or any title or or like y'all like to worship. Y'all like to worship y'all signs and titles and things of that nature and think that ain't what y'all doing. When we talk about the masculine energy and y'all worship man and at the same time. When we talk about the masculine energy, right, that is the ability to push out. And this is what even scientists know, the ability to externally push out. Um, you see what I'm saying? When we talk about the masculine energy, you could kind of look at that like a plug and look at the socket as the feminine aspect of the energy. So when we talk about masculine energy, that is pushing out. So when God push out a what? Thought, idea. You as a spirit, when you push out a what? Thought, idea, an expression, a feeling. You have pushed out a masculine energy. So that is a light. You might can't see it in this realm of reality because you're so indoctrinated that you don't understand what I'm talking about. But for the most part... I'm here to tell you, it's Archangel Uriel, you're pushing out a light. Now that light, that spectrum, that concept, that degree, that angle, that angel, that becomes your son of God. That becomes your masculine energy from your spirit. So for the most part, when we're thinking about a being that we live in, this is what they was trying to deify as the planets. So angels will be the body of God. Angels will be the concepts, the ideas, the lights, the fire of God. And fire is your imagination, passion, flame, intuition, and your enlightenment and your insight even when we're talking about astrology. So for the most part, you have 
positive angels and you have negative angels that have low angles to attack circumstances. These will be low vibrational ideas, angels that have failed. So when you see a concept, an idea that falls down, say your idea don't work, then you have a fallen angel, right? So it gets demonized because now it's in a low vibrational state. You got too emotionally attached to that thought form and idea. You didn't let it light and fly off. So when we're looking at us living in a being, back then these guys was trying to help you understand that by deifying the stars in that way. So the stars that start to fall and create the fall season, uh, this is how they was looking at things. The angels have failed. Now due to fallen angels, we get stuff on a like different bacteria, different fungus, different things, but that's another video. But like I said, the only star that appears to rise when all the close stars are falling during this period of time is the fixed star Antares. And this is the energy that's correlated to uh, the Watcher of the West. And the Watcher of the West is what they're correlating to the um, Archangel Uriel. Which this is what my moon sign could jump. So for the most part, this is why I might got a better way of seeing these scriptures than everybody in the world. Like... And by us having the internet now, you can literally say that. That's crazy. But for the most part, like I was saying, this was uh, them experiencing the fall season. Them getting ready to start to experience snow. Them starting to get to experience transformation, death. And then when we start to get into the correlation of the, uh, the fallen angels and Mount Hermon, these are them explaining all the stars that have fallen during that period of time. And all the stars that have fallen during that period of time gave ideas amongst the land of mankind and men and women gave them ideas on how to sustain themselves through the fall and winter time. So a lot of these ideas and thought forms that humanity was coming up with to sustain themselves through fall and winter time was astrology, rituals, learning how to cook, coming up with metals, coming up with um, different uh, forms of foundation so you can uh, sustain yourself through that astral travel. But let's not get too esoteric on them so they can sustain themselves through that season. So they may have did certain constructions and built certain houses and built certain things of that nature. In order, So these was the ideas and concepts. Now whatever spirit then came up with the scripture and kind of remixed it and made y'all scared of this book. Made y'all feel like it's uninspired. Uh, made y'all feel like this is something that's demonized and made y'all feel like or see it in a way that it's not supposed to be seen is one of the reasons why the whole world is not understanding that this is what it is and that's it, that's all. You know what I'm saying? So these thought forms and ideas, when these stars fall, humanity had came up with a bunch of thought forms and ideas on how to sustain themselves uh, through the fall and winter season. So this came out into the description of Fallen angels, Mount Hermon, and angels giving humanity uh, certain information. You know what I'm saying? And I just translated that for y'all, though. That's basically what it was. So when we're going through the fall and winter time, right, the ideas and thought forms that we come up with, a.k.a. the angels that we get hit by, be ideas and feelings and emotions on how to sustain ourselves through the fall and winter time. So you see how clear that is now? Instead of them trying to remix it and make you think it's something that it ain't now. And you'll get a theologian who will, listen, who will look at me, right? Use the term New Ager as, as, as if that's a form of dismissal. And dismissing something in some type of way. Like that's a good thing. And say I'm indoctrinated. When I just gave you the clearest perspective of how you're supposed to see this. And that's how you get unindoctrinated <laughs> so it's almost like it baffled me of the times we are in it let me know how low vibrational certain baby child like spirits are that still need spiritual authority in some type of way so it manifests in their third dimensional life in the same way but we see things are not working for these people in that kind of spectrum anymore you see what i'm saying because that's old outdated knowledge and it does not make any sense into the new age because it's old age old outdated information of old expired shapes and forms that's no longer have life to them so you really have to understand things uh, clearly from what you're actually talking about. You know what I'm saying? All the fixed stars in the sky that we see as far as like Spica uh, during, during zero degrees of the seventh house, which is um, zero degrees Libra, which is the beginning of the fall season. And for the most part, um, it's opposite the spring. And all the fixed stars like Spica, Vertex, um, um, that's in the Virgo constellation that we see up there. All, all these stars back then was 
the ones that they was calling fallen angels because these was the stars that appeared to be falling in the sky same way like the sun and the, all the we you're spinning and you're further away from these stars so it created the spectrum of the space that you are in at the moment which is correlating to spring i mean fall and autumn and winter and then the stars that they was seeing um that did rise the star that rised in the west the watcher of the rest uh the watcher of the west the ruler over to taurus you see what i'm saying which you at the at this primitive time right now this was dealing with the taurus constellation and the taurus energy being uh deified and things of that nature and since this fixed star was in the heart of the it still is in the heart of the scorpio constellation scorpius constellation then for the most part if that was rising and you guys was opposite in the bull you guys was already in hades during this period of time you know what i'm saying and at this period of time winter was uh more correlated to the uh to the opposite energies i mean fall was correlated to the opposite energies so when they was deifying the bull and things of that nature when they looked into the actual sky you see what i'm saying they seen uh the opposite sign scorpio and in the heart of that was the brightest star and the brightest star which is still there is the fixed star antares so for the most part this was the star that they was um this was the star that they was correlating to as archangel that showed enoch the uh heavens of the sky you see what I'm saying? And show heaven and, and, and took Enoch up to the heaven's gates. Now the twelve heaven gates, that's just the twelve houses. The three sixty will, the space that we are in, the, the space we live in. So keep that in mind. And he helped Enoch understand these things as Archangel Uriel. Now, y'all see how my energy is right now as Archangel Uriel? This is the reason why they took me out of all the other uh, Bibles. All the all the, Rebe the Rabbit, the, the Rabbit uh, Bibles, however, the Rabbi, or however the fuck you want to call it. Uh um this they took me out of all that shit you know what i'm saying the only ones that they wanted to keep in there is motherfuckers who fell short which was michael gabriel jabril whatever the fuck you want to call it and goddamn uh Raphael. and Raphael wasn't even really Raphael kind of more on my side but you know what i'm saying at the same time he knew how to Raphael knew how to play his part because Raphael got a lot of attention but at the same time when it comes to uriel they try to sweep me under the rug you know what i'm saying they don't want me kicking that shit. That's why I had to come in a physical form. And I had to come in the way I'm, I came in this way. Like, I had to come in this way and look like how I look and do certain things I had to do just because it, it's perfect. Everything is perfect. So you may not understand it. But some things ain't meant to be understood because we need to stop creating firmaments so we can be light and receive all the rainbow waters and the esoteric premortal waters in the sky not just be receiving these ones that keep y'all coming back here in this realm of reality y'all spirits is thirsty and dehydrated and you need to know that so a lot of times just a spirit kicking energy like i'm kicking a lot of times is spiritual melanin spiritual juice spiritual watermelon you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people who are religious or theologian or something like that may come across my videos and may not understand that. But um, but then that they feel like they start to understand that they dehydrated also. Slowly but surely. So at the same time, none of this will even matter in the third dimension after that. After the fact, when you still get into this true knowledge. So I'm going to start breaking down every Bible. I'm going to start breaking down all mythologies i'm gonna start breaking down and then correlating them to the fixed star so as all my astrologers and everybody out there y'all ain't gonna look at this as nothing different but oh this cat breaking down fixed stars <laughs> but i'm gonna break i'm gonna i'm gonna break down a fixed star and break down the whole mythology and the story behind it of all these religions and shit that that fall up under one fixed star and then y'all gonna start seeing how many gods really out here how many spirits really out here for real because a lot of times y'all bible don't even be about one spirit. A lot of times y'all Bible be about a whole bunch of whole bunch of spirits. You know what I'm saying? A whole whole bunch it's, it's what you got it's a spirit in y'all Bible named jealousy. And then a lot of y'all will go through debates and arguments trying to correlate jealousy with the spirit that y'all think that the Bible talking about at the beginning of the Bible. And it'd be a whole that that's a whole nother spirit, that jealousy one. It's a whole that's a whole another motherfucker. Like you, like you see, I not understand this shit. When we talk about a God, a God is just a spirit that went in a space before other spirits have. And you can live through that spirit, through that space, or you can live amongst that spirit, amongst that space. You see what I'm saying? In some way, shape, or form. Now I didn't explain how we develop life. After that fact. But that's what a uh, God is. You need to, send, you know what I'm saying? So, 
when you got a spirit that creates a shape and form, a light body, a.k.a. a masculine, an angel, then create a daughter, a man, a.k.a. a physical shape and form for that light, a light body to go into, so that masculine has a feminine to go into, boom, that becomes a three. Now you become a trinity. Now with your spirit controlling your masculine and feminine energies, here's the, uh, your angelic and demonic energy, so don't get lost. That's what it actually is, your Adams and Eves. So when you do start to correlate that as, as a spirit, you push out your influence through those shapes and forms. Now we have one spirit that pushed out that jealousy, whatever energy spectrum you feel about jealousy, we have a spirit that did that first. That walked this earth, a spirit that jumped into a shape and form, as I just explained, and pushed that influence out first. Now that energy, that was it. Once it pushed out a light, it pushed out that influence, it, it did its creations as a spirit. We all do this. It pushed out as one of its characteristics. Now that characteristics has accumulated through eons and eons or time and time. So whoever was copying and doing that energy, they was representing that spirit. That spirit might have changed now. We don't know that. That spirit might be in so, another dimension. Might have ascended or descended somewhere else and in another shape and form. And, and been cursed with that creation so bad to the point they want to detach from it and create another life. That's another video. But for the most part, whoever copying that energy of jealousy, that's where it come from. So before you try to deify that to actual shape and form and place that on the blame of another spirit that may not even created that energy in the first place, may I, may have just did it one upon some time because it got possessed by the spirit that did that first based upon the reason why they did it and it, it was formulated to the energy that y'all see today as what we say is jealousy. But at the same time, you need to understand this is what spirituality is. And before you even read any goddamn book, you need to understand that first. And you ain't going to learn no goddamn spirituality in no goddamn school. Know that. We're going to go live today, motherfucker. Fight, boss, bitch. Goddamn air. But yeah, the book of Enoch in a nutshell is about the fall season, autumn. And you can go into, even to the word Nephilim, it's about falling. So even if you feel like I ain't explained it right, I, I don't even feel like getting too 3D down for y'all. So you can go do all your extracurricular research and shit like that. And you're going to come to the same conclusion I came to. you just going to have more baggage and more details of it. Of explaining what I just told you in a nutshell. The book of Enoch is about the fall season. Flight boss, bitch, goddamn air. And the fall season starts at zero degrees of the seventh house. Which is, used to be, the constellation Libra used to be there. But now it's the zero degrees of the first house. And the star that rise on the west during this period of time is what? Me, the fixed star Antares, Archangel Uriel. Flight boss, bitch, goddamn air. Watch out the west.